recent uh, coup d'etat in Africa, is it reshaping the Africa's political scene or sphere? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once more for making out time to be with us today. It is uh, pan, uh, the Pan-African debate, the first for the month of September 2023. And today we are looking at very two crucial topics, of course, uh, starting with what is making waves across Africa with the recent coup d'etat in Gabon and what is unveiling already in Niger and other countries in Africa that have witnessed uh, uh, military takeovers. We want to analyze to a greater extent the impact of this military coup in, uh, coups in Africa and also see if it is reshaping the African political landscape and if be the case, how can it be done now to the extent of that it will not further jeopardize the peace and stability or even challenge the democracy that is already existing across Africa. Just to note that in the course of the program, we'll also be analyzing uh, the regional elections that uh, Russia will be holding in the new regions, uh, uh, the four occupied uh, regions. We're looking at the impact of these regional elections and how it will go a long way to change, uh, of course, uh, how uh, things are being run in, in the, these uh, regions. We're talking about Donetsk, we're talking about uh, uh, Logan, we're talking about Kherson, and of course, uh, we'll be discussing it in the course of uh, the uh, program. And uh, there are actually key areas uh, as far as the coup d'etat in Africa is concerned concern key points that we will accentuate on in the course of the program like uh, contextualizing coup d'etat and of course uh, taking p uh, particular coup d'etats that have uh, occurred in Africa in recent times we want to look at uh, the causes and motivation especially of the 21st century coup d'etat we we'll also look at uh, in a greater extent to see if uh, this coup d'etat uh, in present uh, society uh, are necessary to redefine Africa's political scene. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. If you are just tuning in, you are most uh, welcome. Time for us to uncover the panel of experts, the great panel that will give us a total uh, provoking analysis uh, to go a long way to analyze constructively, or I always reiterate constructively, uh, the, the happenings around Africa's uh, political atmosphere and see uh, the way forward as far as military uh, takeovers are concerned in Africa. Let's take you now uh, to the United States of America. Uh, we're going to welcome uh, uh, Dr. A.D. Eric, who is joining us uh, today uh, in his capacity as program officer at the Solidarity Center for uh, Africa uh, Development. Hello to you. Dr. Eddie, it's a pleasure having you this day. Thank you, Clarice. It's always for me uh, a pleasure to uh, attend, participate in this uh, show uh, with my uh, esteemed colleagues as well. And I say hi to them. Happy weekend. Respecting this uh, rendezvous, Dr. Eddie, uh, let us also acknowledge the presence of uh, Mr. Arnold Devley in his capacity as a political consultant. Of course, uh, uh, we are most delighted to have you again on the Pan-African debate, Mr. Devley, and looking forward to having an engaging uh, uh, debate with you. Good day to everybody. Thank you for having me, Clarice. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, too, for making up time to be with Africa Media this day, Mr. Davley. And uh, we're acknowledging Mr. Clemson Ellis, who is a geopolitical strategist and also an electrical power engineer. He's joining us, sure, from the United Kingdom. You're most welcome to the Pan-African debate, sir. Thank you, Clarice. I wouldn't miss it for the world. It's always a pleasure. And... Uh, Finally, let's uh, welcome Mr. Elijah Enoko, researcher with Leeds University on African development. Thanks for making out time for us this day, sir. Uh, thanks for having me one more time, Clarice, and uh, hopefully we're going to have uh, a fruitful discussion this uh, afternoon where you are and morning where I am and um, be able to talk about the things that are happening on a beautiful continent of Africa. Thanks for having me.
It's always a pleasure having you all. Just to remind us of that uh, Yulia Burke, a political scientist, will be joining us in the course of, of the program. And if you are just tuning in, this is uh, the Pan-African debate on Africa Media Television, uh, uh, the recent military takeovers in Africa reshaping the Africa's political landscape in uh, contemporary society. That is our bond of contention today. Uh, but of course, as tradition, I would always like us to give a holistic perspective of what is happening, taking the most recent of it all. Uh, we saw what happened in Gabon after the uh, August 26 presidential election. We saw the military overwhelming the, the, the president and of course uh, the declaration of being in control, wanting to uh, be in control to reinstate uh, institutions. So we want to analyze, uh, let's kick starter with you, uh, Dr. Eddie Eric. We are looking at uh, recent coup d'etat in Africa and bringing it to, to this uh, very uh, problematic, how it's affecting Africa's uh, political scene. But first of all, let's contextualize the military takeovers in the 21st century. Amazingly, uh, Clarice, uh, maybe we want to look at uh, the late uh, 20th century by uh, the 1990s, when uh, most of the African countries decided the following uh, social upheaval, starting in uh, Benin, for instance, in 1989, which uh, was uh, joined, you know, by or instrument, uh, instrumented, I'm sorry, by uh, different unions, you know, the social forces, as we say, to bring what we call the uh, second wave of a democracy. What is important even here to note is that after so many years of either one party rule in so many countries, especially the French uh, speaking countries or countries that were under former, uh, under, uh, under colonial, uh, French colonial rule, there was this desire by populations that to work, gain more space. Right in terms of their political and civil rights, it was also the time when the people like you know Basi Davidson, uh, Voltaire, those era they lost a decade, you know, what the 1970s to the 1980s, when uh, African economies, you know, were, were uh, really not moving. The point in it here I'm trying to make is we uh, ended the 20th century with high hopes. Right, with all of these movements by reshaping again, you know, what the uh, political institutions. We remember it was the decades when uh, African countries, the people, you know, were voters, citizens, you know, were decided and agreed. Uh, one reason or another to uh, reshape their constitutions, put a name to this uh, long uh, ru uh, ruling, you know, uh, head of states who were all, you know, were blamed for the uh, political and economic, you know, uh, lethargy in which uh, the African countries were. At the same time that those happen within the respective African countries, we also saw that, you know, where regional economic uh, bodies moved to being simple economic, you know, where bodies, I'm talking about the ECOWAS, the uh, CEA, uh, CEAC, and many others of those uh, uh, institutions to become not just economic instruments, but also political instruments. We have seen it in the case of West Africa, for instance, when uh, Liberia descended into shambles with uh, the uh, civil war that broke out, you know, on December 24, 1980. The, uh, uh, nine that uh, the ECOMOG, for instance, was put into place. But the ECOMOG is a child or was under the uh, uh, ECOWAS. Points uh, to fast forward. All that, you know, were brought hope. And then we saw again uh, some uh, sort of uh, uh, elections in and there. Today, we can applaud what is happening in Benin, a country that has been uh, marked by uh, coup d'etat in the 1960s and 1970s, uh, that brought you know, a Marxist leader, Mathieu Kerekou. We saw what happened in Togo. We saw what happened in Burkina Faso. So there was this hope uh, that what we are witnessing today is uh, uh, with uh, Mali. Uh, in 2020 and then 2021, Burkina Faso, uh, recently Guinea in 2022, uh, Niger this year, 2023, and Gabon, you know, uh, happening. We will say, and my uh, comment is this, that, you know, number one, we are witnessing, you know, a regression 
of what the African populations desired uh, later in the 1990s for which student unions, uh, workers unions, and any other social forces you know, were worked uh, for to obtain strong, stable political institutions to guide the stability in those countries, but of course uh, to be the basis of a, uh, an economic development. What we are witnessing today means that uh, those desires were not met. Not only they were not met, but I believe that uh, we uh, moved in a direction that is certainly worse than where we were probably in the 1990s. When you look at Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso, especially these three countries of the Sahel, one of the big things that people are uh, 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 pushing for is what we have a term as a terrorism, which I use the term uh, global uh, political violence, you know what to uh, des describe. In Guinea and uh, Gabon, as we see, it is another form of a political coup that uh, have uh, coups that have a meme those two countries, we are talking about the longevity of uh, the uh, ruling elite in those countries. So my last word in uh, giving this picture is this, that, you know, what, what is it that, you know, people are desiring? Are we in the position to say that, you know, the African population in those countries are supporting political coup? I don't think so. What I believe is that the people are fed up and tired of weaver political system in place, tired of weaver ruling elite not being able to bring them the basic uh, and fundamental right that they need. And at this moment, like in the 1960s, 1970s, people will applaud any change that comes with the hope that it will create a, a foundation for a better future. And last example we can take for that one is the case of Nigeria. It may not be the best of the best, you know, with democracy of today, but remember, between the 19, the time when uh, 1985 up to uh, 1990s, I mean, you have at least uh, two good decades of Nigeria uh, being ruled by uh, military uh, leaders. But what happened? When General Abu Salami Abubakar took over in 1999 after uh, Sani Abasha died, he led a transition of only nine months. Nine months. That led to what we are, where we are today, Nigeria. Even if we have a former military rule that came and won election, that's what we want. And that's where Nigeria is at, at the moment. So it is not per se that people are claiming, you know, military rulers, they are actually fed up with a situation or a system that has been in place, which is not guaranteeing, again, conditions for people to work, conditions for women to have uh, access to uh, health care, pre- and postnatal care, condition for young people to uh, benefit from uh, what we can call, you know, resources in their countries. And this is my submission for uh, this first question.